This morning, major developments in Iraq. We are learning that ExxonMobil, that oil giant, is reportedly evacuating staff in its branch offices that are located in Basra and also in Baghdad. We also are learning that BP is also evacuating about 20 percent of its staff from that area right now. Well, this comes as we're hearing from Iraq's government that its forces wrestled back. They are saying wrestled back control of the nation's largest oil refinery. At one point earlier in the day, it had been reported that terrorists had reportedly seized most of that site. That would have pushed up oil prices, obviously still very volatile there. Uh, oil prices still at a nine-month high right now. Also, former Vice President ratcheting up his criticism of the Obama administration's handling of all of this. We'll take a look at Liz and Dick Cheney's op-ed in the Wall Street Journal. Here to discuss all of this, the situation as it unfolds in Iraq and any potential U.S. response is Senator Dan Coats. He's a Republican from Indiana. Senator, I appreciate you being here this morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I want to begin with this op-ed. I assume that you've read it in the Wall Street Journal. I want to read you part of it. Uh, Dick Cheney and his daughter Liz writing, quote, Rarely has a U.S. president been so wrong about so much at the expense of so many. This comes as the nation debates any potential military action. This is a scathing op-ed talking about the president being out golfing uh, while we're facing this increasing terror threat. What do you make of what Dick Cheney wrote here? Uh, I think that uh, what has been said is, is very true in terms of what's happened under this presidency. You know the Constitution gives the president uh, the commander-in-chief title and the responsibility to deal with crises whether they, in terms of how they affect the United States. This clearly is in our economic and strategic interest here. And with all the blood and treasure we spent to bring Iraq to a United State and, and frankly, a pretty pacified uh, after the surge, uh, we've seen it now deteriorate rapidly. This is an opportunity for the president to step up and regain some credibility for the United States and I think provide some leadership and I hope he takes it. He's supposed to meet with the leadership today. It's way too late. Uh, he's in the desert, but the wrong desert and should have been in the White House, but at least it's a start and I'm calling on the president. Mr. President, um, we look to you as a leader uh, not only of our country, but uh, our country as a, a leader in the world. And we need some decisiveness and some decisions. Uh, you can't just keep turning to Congress and saying, Senator, give us some ideas. The president is the one that needs to form Sen the policy. Senator, at the same time, it was the Bush-Cheney administration that signed in 2008 that Status of Forces Agreement that required all troops, not just combat troops, all American troops out of Iraq by 2011. Now, of course, there are those that say the Obama administration should have started sooner in extending that, should have uh, worked harder on those negotiations with the, with the Maliki government. But isn't some of the blame here as well on the Bush and Cheney administration, something obviously that is not brought up at all in this op-ed? Well, you know, the important thing is that everyone steps up and takes responsibility. That's the duty but is of that the Congressman, is that and that's the duty is that of happening? the President of the United is, States. Is that happening, sir? Well, uh, we have literally walked away from Iraq and tried to press, uh, given the leverage that we have, any kind of uh, involvement in a status of forces relationship with Iraq that is absolutely necessary and putting pressure on their president there to be much more inclusive and staying engaged. Frankly, we have a lot at stake here, not just for Iraq, not just for the Middle East, but for the United States. And whatever happened in the past, it's time to step out now and make a decision. Go before the yeah. Congress, go before the American people, and make a decision, Mr. President. At the same time, in 2011, the Maliki government was unwilling to give the United States the guarantees that it needed to, it believed, at least at that time, to keep our troops there, uh, protection from prosecution and other things. I want to talk to you about something that some of your fellow Republicans have been talking about, and and that is uh, an area where they're a bit divided, whether or not the U.S. should potentially take up this opportunity for discussions with Iran. Being, on, Of course, there's the nuclear uh, divide, but being on the same side with Iran when it comes to uh, wanting to defeat and hold back ISIS. You know, you heard uh, Ted Cruz on Aaron Burnett out front last night saying, no way, no how. You heard Hillary Clinton addressing the prospect of that in the town hall. And then you even have Lindsey Graham, who said he would be you know, willing, the U.S. should be willing to have those discussions. Where do you fall on that? Should we be talking? talking to Iran about working together here? You know, we've got a saying in southern Indiana, at least, that if you lie down with dogs, you wake up with fleas. Iran is the uh, 
a leading sponsor of terrorism, a leading sponsor of un unrest uh, throughout the Middle East. Uh, they have uh, created the uh, IEDs that have maimed and killed our soldiers. Uh, we are pursuing uh, their quest for nuclear weapons. Uh, this compromises everything we do. We are we, making peace with an enemy uh, to try to deal with the situation that we should be dealing with with our allies and friends, not with our enemies. So that's a no? Absolutely a no. It'd be Just a tragic mistake for us. We would pay long-term consequences for that type of a, arrangement. I appreciate the time this morning, Senator Dan sure Coates. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. Our conversation on the developing situation in Iraq will continue straight after a break. I'll ask a military analyst about President Obama's possible options. Are airstrikes still on the table? A lot of reporting about that out this morning. We're back in a moment. Happening right now, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid speaking on the situation in Iraq, blasting Republicans about criticizing President Obama's uh, Iraq policy. We're monitoring that for you. We'll bring you the very latest as soon as we have it. Let's bring in a couple more guests to talk about this. Lieutenant Colonel Rick Francona is a CNN military analyst. Also, Patricia Murphy is a columnist with The Daily Beast. Thank you both for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks, Poppy. I want to talk about the Dick Cheney op-ed. I assume you've both read it this morning in the Wall Street Journal. Dick Cheney and his daughter Liz write, quote, rarely has a U.S. president been so wrong about so much at the expense of so many. Um, to you, Patricia, at a time like this, when lives are at stake in, in Iraq, um, when the United States is trying to decide on their course of action, if any, right now, what did you make of this op-ed and what did you make of the timing of it right now? I think the timing of it is very dangerous. I think the op-ed itself is an attempt by the former vice president really to cover his own decisions to keep himself out of the way of blame for what is happening in Iraq today and to try and really just to sort of be an armchair quarterback for what the president is doing right now. I think that it's just not at all helpful to the current debate. If the Bush administration had finished the job that they started, if they had finished the war, if they had completed the status of forces agreement before a new administration came in, they would have been able to protect their own legacy on this. But because it has drawn out so long, because it is now so chaotic, I don't think it helps at all to have anybody in the former administration telling the current administration what they need to be doing. If it is so critical, at, so public, and in a forum like this, I think it's not at all helpful to the debate. At the same time, though, to you, Colonel, I mean, you're on the side of you believe that um, the Obama administration is, is in part to blame for this, for not, as you've talked about, extending that status of forces agreement with the Maliki government back in 2011. Some could see this op-ed as a, a push, an attempt to push the administration at this time to act, to act now. What, it, what is your take on what should be done at this point in time by the well, U.S.? Well, I think, I think we made a big mistake in 2011 by walking away from the status of, form, uh, status of forces agreement extension talks. Uh, I think it was very important that we keep some sort of residual force in Iraq. Between 2008 and 2011, the security situation did not improve enough that would have allowed us to leave uh, precipitously, in my opinion, as we did. Uh, had we been able to keep uh, a reasonable sized force in Iraq, we might not be having this conversation mm -hmm. because they would have been able to blunt that attack on Mosul, which precipitated this move on Baghdad. So I think that was a failure on our part uh, to do that, and I think we're living with the consequences of that. I want to ask you, you served as a military attache in Syria, and I was thinking about this a lot this morning, wondering, do you think that the president risks looking hypocritical here if he, the administration, the U.S. attacks ISIS in Iraq and did not during its rise in Syria? Or do you think it's a, a sign of lessons learned from the situation and the unfolding, the downward spiral, spiral in Syria? Well, you know, Syria is, uh, has been a problem for three years since the revolution began. And I think we missed an opportunity early on to support the more moderate elements uh, that were present in Syria. I think that opportunity has, uh, the window has closed. Right. Uh, I think the situation is uh, too bad now in Syria to get involved right there. Uh, we have an opportunity to blunt ISIS in Iraq. I think we should take advantage of that. Uh, we cannot live with this uh, uh, artificial state uh, created by an Islamic group between Syria and Iraq. That would uh, provide yet another safe haven for uh, al-Qaeda to come back in, uh, for another Islamist groups, jihadis from all over the world. Uh, that would be really dangerous uh, in the future. So I think the president has an opportunity to move now in Iraq where we failed in Syria. I appreciate the time. Wish we had a lot more of it with both of you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Rick Francona and Patricia Murphy. Appreciate it. Newsroom, back in a moment.